commission please as I call Robert Regan. Mr Regan is in the witness box. Mr Regan, do you mind standing just for a moment? Mr Regan, would you prefer to take an oath or would you prefer to make an affirmation? Oath, thank you. Very well, swear the witness. Just repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the and truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Regan. Do sit down. Yep. Yes, Ms. Orr. Uh, Mr. Regan, could you please state your full name? Robert Emmett Regan. Uh, and Mr. Regan, you've provided your address to the Royal Commission. I did. Uh, and what is your occupation, Mr. Regan? Retired. I'm sorry? Retired. Retired, thank you. I'm and sorry, Mr. Regan, you're going to have to bellow for my benefit. And okay, sorry about perhaps, that. Perhaps the microphone could be directed towards Mr. Regan as well. Thank you. Mr. Regan, did you receive a summons to attend and give evidence before the Royal Commission? Yes. Do you have that summons I there do. with you? I tender that summons, Commissioner. Uh, exhibit 1.81 uh, summons Robert Emmett Regan. Someone will collect that summons from you, Mr. Regan. And Mr. Regan, did you make a statement to the Royal Commission on the 8th of March 2018? Yes. Uh, have you read through that statement? Yes. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? They are. Yes, I tender the statement, Commissioner. Give it 1.82 statement, Robert Emmett Regan, of 8 March 2018. Mr. Regan, what did you do before you retired? I, I had uh, a series of three jobs, uh, driving a school bus for handicapped children, cutting grass and lawn maintenance, and cleaning at night. And cleaning? Cleaning at night time. Cleaning at night time. for the past 30 years. Thank you. And uh, do you sometimes have issues with your memory, I do. Mr. Regan? And yes. can you explain why? I had a uh, fractured skull some time ago. Yes. Uh, and how old are you now, Mr. Regan? 72. Thank you. Man in young middle age, say after me, Mr. Regan, man <laughs> in young middle age. Yeah, that's all we are. <laughs> Mr. Regan, in February last year, did you decide to take out a loan? Yes. Uh, and how much money did you decide you wanted to borrow? $50,000. And why did you want to borrow that money? I, I required money to pay uh, some people in London who I later found out to be fraudsters. Right. Uh, and what was the nature of the fraud? Um, well, they, uh, they, they believed, or they, they led me to believe that they had a quantity of gold, where, which they'd been um, uh, seized by customs in Heathrow Airport, and the supposed person bringing the gold to Australia mm -hmm. to sell was, um, was kept in custody there, and the money to get the gold released was £20,000 and after I've, I, I did send that money to them and following that they required another £7,500 and I decided I would take, take that money to England and confront them. Was this your gold or someone else's Not gold? Not my gold. And so why were you assisting with these payments? Uh, I was led to believe that these, these, this person needed the money and she, uh, or was supposedly a woman, uh, decided that uh, it was a better option to sell gold in Australia than England, and she won't wish to bring it here. So, do I understand your evidence to be that you wanted to assist this person? Yes. You wanted to provide the money to them? Yes. Uh, and you subsequently found out that this was a, a fraud? Yes. Yes. Uh, but at the time that you decided you wanted a loan, in February 2017, you did not know that? No. Uh, and you wanted to borrow $50,000 uh, to give to these people yes. to assist them? Yes. All right. And what was your income at this time? Uh, my income was about 12000 uh, Yeah, but um, no, sorry, just have a look at that. You deal with this if it assists uh, Mr Regan in paragraph uh, four, I think, of Paragraph4. your statement. Yeah. That's the final drawdown there. Do you um, see in paragraph four, Mr. Oh, sorry, Regan, I'm, in, I'm in the wrong area. In on the first page. 
Yes. You give an estimate of your current fortnightly income of approximately $1,260. That, that's correct. Yes, and that's your current uh, uh, fortnightly income. Uh, what would your current fortnightly income have been approximately in February last year? Um, that was... I think you give it in the first line over the next page, Mr. Regan, at twelve twenty nine. Is that right? Tw uh, yes, that's correct. Twelve twenty nine dollars. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Fortnightly yeah. in February twenty seventeen. Yes, yes. yes. Sorry, I didn't see that. Then. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, did you intend to use your home to secure this loan, Mr. Regan? I did. Uh, and did you own your home without a mortgage at yes. that time? Uh, and. Did you speak with someone about obtaining a loan? Yes, I, I spoke to a broker. Right. Uh, and approximately how many times did you speak with the broker? Oh, four or five. Yes. Mm. And did you tell the broker what size loan you wanted? Yes. Uh, and did you tell the broker why you wanted the loan? Yes, but what, personal reasons. Personal reasons. Yeah. And did the broker ask you for any documents? He did. And what sorts of documents did the broker seek from you? Uh, uh, proof of my income, which was uh, a combination of age pension and a part superannuation, uh, bank statements and copies of my utility bills. Uh, also a rate, notice, uh, a rate notice and a title. And did you give uh, yes. documents uh, showing those things to the broker yep. and what did you understand that the broker did with those documents? He took copies as far as I was concerned. Yes. Uh, now I, I think you said in that answer that did you say that there were bank statements as well? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, now did the broker ask you questions about your income? No. Uh, what was your understanding of how the broker informed himself about your income? That it would be satisfactory mm -hmm. for the and loan and, and that $50,000 was, was easy. Yes, and, and what did you understand about where and how uh, the broker was finding out about what your income was and where it was coming from? From my bank statements. Yes. And did the broker ask you questions about your expenses, your living expenses? No. Mm -hmm. uh, and did the broker talk to you about the contents of your bank statements? No. Now. Could I show you uh, an exhibit to your witness statement, which is RER2? Yes. Uh, thank you. Are these, is this a copy of the bank statements that you provided to the broker? Yes. And do we see there that you were banking with CUA, Credit Union Australia? That's correct. Was that the only entity that you were banking with yes. at this time? Yes. And you had a number of accounts that are listed in uh, the first part of this document? Yes. And if we uh, are able to zoom in on that, we'll see that you had an everyday 55 plus account, yes. a platinum plus account, Yes. Another Platinum Plus account, an eSaver reward account, a term deposit and a fixed personal loan. Yes. Uh, and these bank statements started on the 1st of February 2017 and went through to the 28th of February 2017. Yes. So we have one month of your bank statements. Uh, do we see in these bank statements any money that you were paying to the people who you subsequently um, just found out, uh, in your yeah, words, yes, were fraudsters? Yes, we do. Uh, can you, do you have that document there? I do. And can you indicate uh, on this first page which of these amounts you paid to the people you described as the fraudsters? Yes. Uh, can, you, can you identify the figures? Yes, I can. Yes, thank you. Do you want me to go, go through them? Yes. Okay. 3rd of February, 1,000. Uh, like 5th of February, 2,000. 7th of February, 200. 
Yes. We may need to move to the next page of your uh, bank statements on the screen. There's a page uh, after that. Yep. 13th 0034. of February. I'm sorry, just wait one oh, moment, sorry, Mr Regan, for us to follow along. What was the date you just mentioned? Uh, 13th of February. Yes. How much did you pay on the 13th of February? 200. Thank you. 17th of February, 200. And could I pause there? We see next to a lot of these, um, the letters, we see card purchase visa WU. That's Western Union. Western Union. Uh, were you um, making transfers, international money transfers? Yes. Yes, yeah. I see. So 17th of February, 1,530. Yes. Um, yes, that's right. Yes. Uh, uh, have I been reading the wrong ones? I think no, I... well... Uh, not to my knowledge, okay. Mr okay. Regan, if you keep going and identifying the ones that you think you uh, paid to these people. Yep. Uh, and next one is um, 18th of February, 1,530. Yes. 19th of February, 1,020. 20th of February, 1,020. Uh, 23rd of February, 314. 20, oh, same one. Uh, 25th of February, 515. Now, have you done a, a tally at all of the amounts of money over the course of this month that uh, yes, I have. you paid out of this account to the people you've described as the, the fraudsters? Yes. And how much money was it? Well, uh, it's Mr. at least 13,500. Thank you. Uh, now, this is a document you provided to the broker. And did the broker ask you about any of these withdrawals from your account? No. And if we could go back to the first page of your bank statements, uh, to the list of accounts there. Yes. This bank statement that we've just been looking at the detail of mm -hmm. is for your... Um, which account? Uh, your Everyday 55 Plus account. Yes. So we can see from this statement that at the start of the month you had approximately 1,500 in that account. Yes. And by the end of the month you had just over $5,000 in that account. Yes. But within the course of the same month, um, your Platinum Plus account on the third line down went from negative $3 yes. to negative $5,000. Yes. And your eSaver reward account went from 15465 down to $473. Yes. Is that because you were transferring money from well, other from accounts? Account, uh, those accounts into the 55 plus account. Yes, I see. Um, and did the broker ask you about any of these other accounts and the amounts of money that had left your account in that month? No. Uh, now, uh, do you recall the broker showing you a document called Preliminary Assessment and Product Recommendation? Yes. Uh, you've annexed to your statement at RER3 a copy of that document, which is RCD 0014 0001 And if we could turn to uh, 0043. Do you recall seeing this part of the document? Yes. Uh, do you see uh, in Appendix A, Consumer Requirements Needs Analysis Responses, uh, 1.7, uh, renovation slash home improvements yes. true. Mm. Did you ever tell the broker that the purpose of the loan was for renovation or no. home improvements? No. Were you aware that the broker had described your loan as being for renovation or home improvements? At, at a later date I did. Uh, that he 
suggested that they had to put something better than personal loan. Right. Whether that's better than personal loan, I don't know. And was this after the loan was approved that you became aware of that or before? No, before the loan was right, approved. Right, I see. And could I then take you to uh, 0046? Yes. Do you see at 8.6 of this document that your food, groceries, meat, fruit and vegetables is listed as $300? Yes. Was that estimate of your monthly uh, expenditure on food correct? No. Um, was that more or less than that's, your... That's less than I would spend. Thank you. At that time. Uh, and your transport expenses were listed as $100 a month. Was that estimate correct? No. And over the page at 8.8, .8, was your transport, I should ask, lower or higher than what it should have been? The transport was higher. Higher. It should be higher it than, should be than, higher. than that you, estimated amount, yes. And then 8.8 .8, yes. um, listed for medical private health insurance and ongoing medical bills, an estimate of $90 a month. Was that estimate correct? No. Um, should that have been higher or lower? Should have been higher. And at 8.9, we see an estimate of $0 for insurances and voluntary super. Was that estimate correct? No. Uh, should there have been a figure there? There should have been. Uh, and at... Uh, the categories that follow, including entertainment and dining out, uh, and sports hobbies and memberships and other regular expenditure, we see that zero is recorded for each of those. Were those estimates correct? No. Should there have been figures recorded Should for have those? Been for each, yes. Okay. Um, if the broker had asked you about whether you had other regular expenditure, what would you have said? Well, I, I would have said yes, and, and a lot of that would have been um, clear on my bank statement. Yes. That a lot of my expenditure went through direct debit. Yes. And, the, and what wasn't direct debit would have been withdrawals. Yes. Um, all right. Can I show you uh, another document, which is um, an exhibit to a statement that uh, we will tender shortly, but for now I'll use the document ID, uh, which is... just need the full document ID. Thank you. Uh, ANZ 8000141302020. Do you recall seeing this document before, Mr Regan? Yes, I do. Uh, a personal statement of financial position? Yes. Uh, who completed this document? Uh, Bernie Meehan. Uh, was, so is this a document that was prepared at the time that you were dealing with the broker or later? No, later. Uh, I'll just ask you to look at it carefully, Mr Regan. It's an ANZ mortgage broker distribution oh, I'm sorry. document. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry, I, it's not in your witness oh, no, statement, okay. Mr okay. Regan. You'll just need yeah. to look at the one on yes. the screen. Right, righto. Just let you have a chance to look through it. Mm -hmm. It's called Personal Statement of Financial Position, yes. an ANZ document. Yes. And do you have the entirety of the document on the screen or just a portion of it, Mr portion. Regan? Could we expand so that we can see the entirety yeah, of that's it? that's right now, thanks. Uh, and we see here figures, um, we see your name at the top, the date of 6th of March 2017, and we see figures for your income and for your expenditure. Yes. And the figure for your income is government benefits and pension of $2,663.14. Yes. And the figures for your expenditure on the other side mm. uh, total living expenses of $1,140 yes. per month. Yes. Did you ever provide that figure to the broker? No. And was it an accurate reflection of your no. total living expenses? No. Uh, are your monthly expenses um, more or less, are they, are, are they much the same now as they were at this time in March 2017? 
Well, that, that, that's not an accurate representative yes. Of, yes. Of, what, of what I was spending. No, and to understand what should have been there, what I want to uh, ask you to consider is whether your monthly expenses now are roughly the same as your monthly expenses were at this oh, yes. time. Yes. Is, is that right? Yes. Uh, and you've exhibited to your statement at RER4 a document that I think you were looking at and referring to earlier, a, a document prepared by a financial counsellor. That's correct. Uh, that is an estimate of your current fortnightly income and expenditure. Is that right? That's right. And your current fortnightly expenditure is listed on that document as 1,386. Is that a fair estimate of that your current fair, expenditure? It is. And is it a fair uh, estimate of your fortnightly expenditure back in March 2017? It is. Uh, but instead, on the personal statement of financial position, your monthly living expenses were given as 1,140. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yes. Uh, now, did you talk to the broker about who you should get your loan from? Yes. Uh, and what did he say to you? His recommendation was the ANZ. Right. Uh, and did you apply for a loan with the ANZ? I did. And was that application for a loan in the sum of $50,000 as you had intended? Yes. Uh, and did you... Uh, hear directly from ANZ about that loan? Yes. Uh, did you ever go to an ANZ branch? Yes. Uh, uh, what do you recall about going to an ANZ branch and any conversations you had within the ANZ branch? Uh, I, I, I had about four visits. The first two were with um, female representatives until the loan was approved and that, that's when I saw the bank manager mm -hmm. and he signed the loan off. Or, or opened an account for me with mm -hmm. the loan money. And what do you recall about your discussion with the bank manager? Well, w when I saw the, uh, the statement from him and how much I'd be repaying and at what age I'd be, I asked him would he still be here when I'm 102 making my last payment? And what did he say Nothing. to Nothing. Now, the loan was approved, your application yes. for a loan was approved. Uh, and what happened after the loan was approved? Did you seek to use the funds? I did. Uh, and uh, how, can you explain how you did that? Yes, I, I, um, I saw the bank manager again and he electronically transferred the equivalent of £20,000 to the said people in London, which was about 35000 Australian dollars. Uh, and did the bank manager discuss with you what you were using the money for? No, not at all. Yes. Uh, and what did you do with the remainder of the money? The remainder of the money, I, I bought an air ticket and accommodation and expenses in London whilst I was there. Yes. Uh, now... It was in London that you discovered, I think you said earlier, that the people you had been dealing with... Uh, well, it was uh, about two days before I left. I see. Could yeah. you explain how that happened? Yes. Uh, I, I checked an address that uh, one of these people had given me and found that it was an empty premises, that there was nobody living there and hadn't been for some time, had, hadn't been in the operation for some time. So that was, that was the final thing for me. Mm. So... Uh, went to London and uh, showed what evidence I had to customs and they called their officer and then in turn called the police and we staked out the hotel where I was staying and I was on the phone to these um, these people in London and uh, we, the police managed to catch the courier who had mobile phones with information on the, on the rest of the group and they were in turn caught and they're now in prison. And when you came back to Australia after that, did you make the repayments under your ANZ did. loan? Yes. Did you find it difficult to make your repayments? Yes. How quickly did you find it difficult to make your repayments? I'm sorry. Immediately. I, immediately. Mm. Uh, and did you ever contact ANZ about your difficulties in did. making repayments? 
Uh, and did you speak to any other organisation about your difficulties in making yes, repayments? I yes, I, I, um, I've been assisted by charities for food and vouchers. Yes. Uh, and uh, can you recall uh, what happened when you first spoke to ANZ seeking assistance or, or, or discussing with them that you were having difficulties making the repayments? Yes, they, well, they, they simply put it down to the, the first um, statement that was submitted to them by the um, broker and they claim that the, you know, according to that I can I can continue to pay without any without any trouble. And did you engage lawyers to assist you with this? I did. Yes, and did you authorise those lawyers to talk to ANZ on your behalf? Yes. Uh, and do you recall that in late February your lawyers wrote to ANZ yes. about your situation? Uh, and. Uh, uh, I'll show you a another document which is ANZ 8002820600. So this is a letter of the 21st of February written by the Consumer Action Law Centre directed to ANZ uh, requesting a moratorium. Do you see that in paragraph yes, I do. three? Yes. On your repayments? Yes. Uh, and advising the ANZ that you're in financial hardship and you can't afford basic living expenses in addition to the ANZ loan repayments and you're relying on charities to supply you with food parcels. Now, by this point, you'd been in contact with ANZ yes. about your difficulties before, but assistance I'd, I'd, had not been provided. I'd been in touch provided. with them two, two, time, two or three times. And as a result of that, those communications, did ANZ assist you? No. Uh, and when I say assist you, I'm asking about assistance in the form of um, relief on your loan. No, no relief at all. Uh, so then your lawyers on the 21st of February this year write to ANZ, and this is the letter written, uh, and are you aware that last Friday uh, ANZ contacted your lawyers in response to this yes. letter? Uh, and are you aware that ANZ advised your lawyers last Friday that they would provide you with a three-month moratorium on your loan repayments? Yes. Uh, now, could I uh, ask if you could identify a document which is RCD 0014 0002 0001. Oh, thanks. Thank you. So this is a document, an email from last Friday, sent by a person at ANZ to your lawyer's consumer action. Uh, we are still looking into Mr Regan's concerns. We'll provide a written response before 16 March 2018. I can confirm that ANZ will provide the requested three-month moratorium on repayments. Our letter will provide formal confirmation of this. So this was the communication to your lawyers advising of the three-month moratorium? Yes. Yes, I tender that document, Commissioner. Exhibit 1.81, email ANZ to CALC 9 March 18, RCD 0014-002-001. And are you aware, Mr Regan, that yesterday your lawyers received a further letter from ANZ? Could I ask that you look at RCD 0014-002-002? And if we could have uh, 0002 and 0005, the last page of the letter on the screen. Uh, is this a letter, Mr Regan, to your solicitors of yesterday's date, uh, dealing with the request for a moratorium and hardship assistance for your loan? Yes. Yes. Uh, and. Do you see on page 0004 of that letter a proposed resolution 
made by ANZ. Yes. Which is made on a without prejudice basis, but uh, ANZ have consented to us um, advising the Commission of this. The offer that was made to you yesterday uh, was that ANZ would reverse all fees and interest applied to the home loan since drawdown, stop the accrual of future fees and interest on the home loan, apply a goodwill credit of $1,500 to the home loan balance, and that you would make minimum monthly repayments of at least $150 until the loan is paid in full. And if you disposed of your home, uh, you immediately repay the remaining balance in full and you would release and discharge ANZ from all actions and claims related to your home loan. Uh, this only, I understand this letter only went to your lawyers yesterday, yes. Mr Regan, but have you yet formed a view on what your response to this offer will be? Yes, I reject it. Yes. I'd like to know how old I'll be when I pay it $150 a week. Yes. And a have month, you, sorry. Have you at any time put your home on the market, I, I did Mr. have Regan? my home on the market, yes. And why did you put your home on the market? Pay off this debt. Yes. And is your home still on the market? No. And why is it not on the market? Well, with the money I'd have left after selling and refinancing this loan and putting um, a surety away from myself, there was nothing worthwhile buying for the money left. In the sense of another home? Is yes. that what you mean, yeah, Mr Regan? Right. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, I tender this letter, Commissioner. Uh, exhibit 1.82, ANZ to Calc, 15 March 18, RCD 0014-0002-0002. I'm sorry, would Commissioner just excuse me for a moment? Ah, uh, my junior, Ms Zelesnikov, is querying your exhibit numbers, uh, Commissioner. I'm sure she's right and I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, and suggesting to me that perhaps uh, the email of the 9th of March should be Exhibit 1.83. The summons was 1.81 and the statement was 1.82. Yeah, I never could count, could I? Um, 183, 1.83 will be the email of uh, 9 March. 1.84 will be the ANZ to Calc of 15 March 2018. I have no further questions for yeah. Mr Regan. Thank you, Commissioner. Any party having leave to appear seek to cross-examine Mr Regan other than you, Dr Collins? No, Dr Collins. Just one very short matter, if I could, Commissioner. Um, I wonder if the operator could display ANZ.800.141.3020. Mr Regan, um, Ms Orr asked you some questions about that document that you see on your screen. Had you seen that document before you came to give evidence today? Yes. Yeah. Um, and can you see there are two black boxes on the screen. Have you seen a copy of that document without the black boxes on them? Yes, I have. Yeah. And at the bottom of the screen, one of the black boxes has blanked out a signature. Yes. If we were to look under the black box, would we see your signature? Yes. Uh, and did you sign that document on the 6th of March 2017? Yes. Uh, and had, had you read the document before you signed yes. it? Yes. Uh, and do you see it says immediately above the signature box, um, I, we declare that the details contained within this personal statement of financial position are true and correct? Yes. Had you read that before you I signed had. it? Um, and your evidence to the Commission is that the figures on that form, in fact, are not true and correct. That's true. Thank you, Mr Regan. No further questions. Ms Orr. No, Commissioner. Mr Regan, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you very much. You're excused for further attendance. Commissioner, the, the next witness uh, is Mr William Rankin from ANZ. It's four o'clock already, and uh, although I was initially keen to sit on and try and uh, do Mr Rankin's evidence, I think it would require sitting on for an hour, uh, which doesn't <laughs> seem realistic. Uh, so in that event, uh, Mr Regan is our last witness for the day. 
Uh, I'll adjourn until uh, 9.45 on, uh, or before I do that, Dr. Collins, there's no difficulty, is there, about that witness coming back on Monday? No, not at all. No, not right. at all. I should have checked whether there was difficulty. Well, it's been a long week. Uh, I'll adjourn until 9.45 on uh, Monday morning next. <laughs>